Hello everybody, it's Andy here from AMD Games. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to spawn random actors in a random spot um, based on the positions that you provide for it in the blueprint. So, let's go into our content browser with control and space. Ooh, excuse me, <clears throat> the big yawn. And we're going to create an actor, so go to blueprint class, actor. And this is going to be our spawned underscore actor underscore one. Double click to open it. And in here, we're going to go to event graph, delete everything just to prove that we don't need any code in here. Compile it, go to add, scroll down until you see cone. <clears throat> and then I'm going to add a cone and then we're going to set a material. So we'll create four materials as well. So compile it, save it. And that should, let's go to our viewport, let's bring it up a little bit, just like this, and let's bring the size down slightly. So there, compile it, save it, and close it. So that's that done. We're gonna du duplicate this three times. So that's one, two, and three. So we have four actors, all four are the same mesh, which is the cone. And <clears throat> I'm going to make four materials. So we could actually probably just do a material instance, but we'll do four materials. It's fine. Just for the tutorial. And oops, click, open this up. And in here, we're going to hold free, left click, and let's get a red. It's going to go in there, apply it, save it, close it. So we have our red material. I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate it again, and again. Just for the tutorial, you don't have to do this part. Okay, so in this one, I'm going to change it to blue. Let's save it. And in this one, we're going to change it to, let's do purple, and then save. Saving will automatically apply, so you don't have to click apply then save. And in this one, I'm going to change this to maybe like green or something, or like a yellow. I'll do. Then apply that, save it, and close. So we have four colors, four cones, and then we can apply our colors. Control space. Let's put this here. Uh, control space bar, select our red, pop that in there, compile it, save it, close it. You can now see that this one's red. Open this one up, select this, click on the mesh, apply it, close, and these last two. Excuse me. Uh, cone, purple, select it compile it, save it, close it, and then the last one, very last one, cone, yellow, apply that to our element zero, save it, close it. Now we have four cones, four different colors, and we can create the random spawn locations for each one of these. Obviously, unless you're making a game about cones, you won't use these models. You can replace this with a car, or, um, I don't know, a container, keys anything you want the random object to be so we're going to place four spawn points on these white sections for our grid so we're going to go to quick add to scene go to shapes and then plane you can see here there's a z fight going on so i'm going to move it up slightly and then we're going to hold alt to drag a copy i'm going to do that two more times and then one more time. <clears throat> so we have four spawn points, four cones, and it's going to pick three out of the four spots to spawn them on. Let's go to our level blueprint. Let's select these first. And I'm going to open our level blueprint. And in here, we can right click and then add a reference to our four select adapters. Zoom in. Out of, let's move them down a little bit. So that's going to be one, 
two, and three and four. So out of this, we're gonna get <clears throat> uh, get world location, just like so. Straighten that off. You can copy these, paste it, paste, and paste. I'm just gonna connect these in, like so. Now that we've done that, let's straighten these out. Q to straighten, select all three, and then press Q. And that'll straighten them out for you. Okay, now that we've done these, what we can do next is get a select node. So let's do select. <clears throat> and we've got four options, but we've only got two slots. So let's click add, and then we can connect these up, just like so. And then it's gonna be an integer. And then what we can do then is a random uh, integer in range and we're going to go 0 to 4. So this will select one of these <clears throat> each time. Um, between the value of 0 and 4, this is our array. So it will go, it'll either pick this one, this one, this one, or this one, and it will do that randomly through our random integer in range. The next thing we're going to do is add a custom event. So right click, type in custom, and then we're going to click on it, press F2, this is going to be our uh, spawn random <coughs> actor. And then we need a <coughs> set timer by event. Set timer by event. I'm going to plug the delegate pin here into our event, just like so. Now that we've done that, we're going to get a do n node. Now a do n is like a step up from a do once. A do n node will allow us to input how many times we want it to be able to loop itself before it blocks. So we're going to get a do n. Scroll down, let's find this node. <coughs> Not at the top, was it? No. Probably down at the bottom somewhere. Oh, there it is. It's going to get a do n. So a do n node. This node has an input. Your enter. The mic goes quiet because I keep coughing. So this node has an input. So it would go into our enter. And it has the ability to block after a certain amount of times. So we could even use, just like here, we have our random integer in range, we could have this set to random as well. So again, this could be this could be useful for uh, a turret in a video game or a pulse of light that you want to be random. You want it to flash a value between zero and six. So it could flash twice, once, four times, five, six, any any value in between those two um so you could use this in many many ways uh, you just set the value to which you want it to be able to repeat here so we're going to import our number which is going to be three we're going to check looping on and then a value of two in the time so how this works when we call this event it's going to loop this every two seconds but it can only do it three times once that value is reached, it then blocks this. And the only way to reset this is by using the reset pin. So let's get a delay, hold D, left click, and get a delay node. And that's gonna be a value of two. So every two seconds, it's going to spawn an object. You don't have to use these values. This is just so I can show you how it works. Okay, the next bit we're gonna do is our spawn actor. So spawn at uh, da, 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 from class, this one here. And then we're gonna right click on spawn transform and we're gonna split the struct pin. And then this here is gonna go into our spawn actor. <clears throat> and this value on our select node is gonna go into our spawn transform location. And this one here default is gonna be changed to try to adjust location, but always spawn. 
let's compile and we can see that it's broke because it needs an input for our class which is fine we're going to fix that now so i'm going to delete this one i'm going to recreate it so in our variables i'm going to go to our boolean I'll give it a name in a second i'm going to type in uh oops actor and then we can see here object types we have actors and we're going to go down to class reference the purple one and then we're going to right click here and it will turn change it from single to an array so now we're going to name this to our actor list and then we're going to hold control drag and drop to get it so now they have our array we're going to get length we're going to drag out and get a copy get a copy and here we want a random integer <clears throat> so what this means is the actor list bear with me one second okay so our actor list when we compile well if we click here we can see we can add array elements so let's just say for example it's five long so that would be six in total because it always starts on zero an array always starts with a value of zero and then everything plus on so one two three four five six so there's six potential outcomes in this array our actor list it will get the length so it will know that this list is six long starting with a zero ends in a five and then it's going to pick a random value of that array and then it's going to get one of those elements in the array which which is one of the actors then we're going to plug this into our class just like so and you notice the error is there because we haven't tried to compile yet so press q to straighten Pretty q to straighten bring that up bring these down so this part here let's comment this so we know what it is um check uh length of the array then select a random value within the array list to spawn as an actor <clears throat> okay this part control how many times the code can fire off and the delay for when it happens for our custom event. Let's make the box a bit bigger so it's all on one line. There we go. And this part, again, you don't have to do this bit. This is just so when I go back through it, you can pause the video and you'll see what this is doing. And it's a good way to learn as well. And it's a really good practice to do this yourself in your own projects. Um, <clears throat> pick one. Uh, uh, sorry, three of the four spawn locations to spawn our cone shape actor. Uh, that'll do. And now, if we compile, the error is gone because we have our class. So, in our array list, excuse me, in our array list, we've got too many. So let's delete. Uh, delete these so we've got one two three four so we've got zero to three which is four and then we're going to start placing these in so select them and then click the little arrow here just like so and the last one <clears throat> there we go so we've got one two three and four in our array list now that we've done that, all we need to do now, I think that's everything, is find a way to call this. So how would you call this event? I'll give you a second to answer that. Yes. Okay, so you call it on event begin, oops. Yeah, event begin, I don't know why I deleted that. Event begin play. 
and I'm going to use a delay, hold D, left click. Let's set this to two seconds, just so we can see it working. And then we're going to go up here to where we have our event graph. And in our event graph, we can just drag this and drop it on here. So this is our function for our custom event. So this will then call this event and then start the loop. It'll loop three times and then it'll block itself because it's a do a value or amount of times and then it won't be able to work anymore. So compile it and let's go into our level, right click and play. And you should notice that the cones will start spawning on random spots on the grid. So it's picked there and there. It's probably what's happened why it hasn't done a third one is because one of them's overlapped, so it's decided not to spawn, which is fine. So it was yellow and blue. So let's see what it chooses this time. <clears throat> so we got yellow and blue, but we got them on the left side. Let's try again. Got purple and red. Okay, so it decided to spawn them. <laughs> over there for some strange reason okay let's have a look let's see if I've uh, created a bug let's move these up ever so slightly and let's do uh, always spawn ignore collisions let's try this One, two, three. So we have an overlap. Let's do, let's have a look. Let's do that one. Let's see how it looks now. Nice, okay. So again, this is a requested tutorial, so it might not be specific to everybody, but again, please use this code in other ways. This blueprint will help with other uh, potential scenarios in your own games. Um, but yeah, I hope, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope it was informative. Hope you learned something. Um, you know, consider liking the video as well if, it, if you found it helpful and hit the subscribe button. It's free. It's easy, it's just one click, it doesn't bother you in any way, and it just helps support the channel and helps it grow and reach a wider audience. So thanks very much for watching, enjoy the rest of your week, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.